Madness. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> um, yeah. So last week's show was really quite serious. Yes. I mean, I've had some some amazing, scary, uh, lovely um, some the feedback from it, mate. It's just been awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, just people literally messaging me saying, "How can we help?" And that's amazing. Thank you so much. I, I. I'm going to, right, I'll be blending with you. I'm going to try not to think about that show too much because it really gets me annoyed and a bit emotional. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and then this week's show, uh, depending on how, what bits um, are in the show, yeah, might also seem quite serious because I know that the subject yeah. for the person involved, hi Simon, it is quite uh it's not only his business but is also a big passion of his and <laughs> what made me laugh quite a lot was we had a real giggle before he started yeah we did and we had a real giggle after he started but during the actual show it was quite a serious yeah when that record marker was on yeah he knew he was talking about something very important to him and yeah so i i thought it was quite funny because actually he was I mean, he's th this episode is great. Yeah, um, and he's but... he's he's one of my friends that I will happily class as could become a super evil genius. Okay, <laughs> his his level of intelligence just scares the Jesus out of me. And I've got a few friends like that. So now, ladies and gents, for all of your solar panel wants and needs, ask Jesse at Newton's Nuggets. <laughs> That's not a thing. No, doesn't even exist. No. Shall we actually go to the show now? What you want? You want me to shush and hand over to the expert who knows what he's talking about? Yeah, please. Okay, I'll I'll go quiet. You introduce Simon. Ladies and gentlemen, Simon. Newton's nuggets. Ah, damn it! I was doing stuff. Uh, in. Right, you got me and Simon. I got that. I got that, and now I'll hit record as well. I'm ready then to go, go and I'm going on mute. See you in a minute, mate. Thank you. Right, Mr. Simon, you ready for this? Go for it, my man. Awesome. Do, do you know what? When you get ready to start something, and then you can feel a burp trapped around about there. Let it out. It's not Let's good. Go. It's not good. I'm right. Really sure. Just kicked in either, but hey ho. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Now, I've already warned you that this guy is an old friend of mine, um, and we've just been telling Jesse far too many stories about me breaking stuff at his house and his things. So, so he knows far too many stories about me. But the reason I've asked this man to come along is because I honestly think at the moment we're all trying to save money. We're all trying to be a bit more energy efficient. We're trying to be a bit cleverer about how we use energy. And it is a subject that needs to be talked about. Now, Simon, I've known him for, oh my word, I look over at Simon, about 15, about 18 years now. Yeah. My word. I'm sorry, mate. I'm so sorry. But I've known Simon from networking at Four Networking so long ago when he had his own electrical company. Then he started up a solar company. Then he helped a massive organisation with their solar stuff. And not too long ago, he's gone out on his own again, running his own solar company. Now, I don't know about you lot that are listening, but I'm interested in solar. I think it's very clever. I think how we could use it could be amazing, but I don't get it, okay? I, I just really don't understand it fully. So today what we're going to do is we're going to ask Simon loads of questions about solar and why we should do it, and fingers crossed he'll help us out. So, ladies and gents, here is my mate, Simon Smith. Simon, hello, mate. Hello, Paul. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, hectic. This is uh, incredibly busy times and very difficult times for a lot of people. So we're in a lot of demand at the moment. It's uh, great for business, not so great for most people. I think it's uh, it's tough times. So are you saying that I might need to come to your office every so often and just put you into a nice state of sleep and relax, so that you I can have a bit of a snooze? 
after the day I've had today, yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. Feel free. Nap time would be good, mate. I'm dead. seriously. Thank you so much for taking a bit of time out to come and have a chat with us. Um, I know I kind of sprung the idea on you, but thankfully you went. Yeah, I'm up for that. Um, but we've got a lot of people who either own their own businesses or they want to further themselves. And and I kind of got the feeling of they've got to be like me and they're interested in solar. But the reality is, do you know what, Simon? It's like a car, okay? I love jumping in my car, turning the key and it turns on and it runs. Yep. If I could trust solar that much, maybe I'd be further down the line with it. Yep. Now, um, right, stop, stop there, stop there. I'm going to ask you the first question that I always ask everyone, otherwise people will be moaning at me that I've messed up the format. Simon, could you please tell everyone who you are and why they should listen to me and you for about a half an hour. Okay, so I'm Simon Smith, and as Paul said, I've been involved in the solar industry now for uh, probably 12 years. Um, this is my uh, third business in this game. Um, we were bought out from our first, and then I moved on from that second purchased out business into doing this all for myself again. Um, so I've got a a long period of time in this industry and understand how to integrate these systems into people's lives without it becoming something that is going to require a lot of interference and knowledge on the homeowner or business owner's part. These things should be autonomous and standalone. That's kind of what I excel at doing is integrating systems and making sure you as the end user get maximum benefit without um, having to really think about any of it. It's just a box of magic that does jobs. I like boxes of magic, funnily enough. Um, and you're right, because it's exactly what I just said about me driving a car. Okay, yep. Cars are in a position now where I can open the bonnet and not know what the hell is going on under there. Yep. But as long as it gets me from here to my gig in Birmingham and back, why should I even care? Yeah. Um, and we'll even talk about electric vehicles, if that's all right with you, because you're... You've got an electric van, which looks stunning. You would not know it's an electric vehicle at all, and yep. it works brilliantly, right? It certainly does, yeah. Yeah, we've been driving that for six, seven months. Actually, crikey, we're in October, 10 months. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. Boltless, yeah, yeah. And for those people who say uh, about mileage issues, now, this is the biggest thing for me with an electric vehicle is how many miles it can do in one run. I still don't think we're quite there for my lifestyle. But then on the flip side... Mate, you just drove to Amsterdam and back in yours. Did, yeah. And the there's a couple of key points, and you're absolutely right. If you were driving a couple of hundred miles a day, probably not quite there yet, With certainly not with an electric van. There are cars that will do that for you. Uh, the van, probably not so much. Um, they are very load dependent as well. And they're also about as aerodynamic as a house brick. So, you know, they're not the best option for an electric vehicle. Uh, for our business, obviously, it's in a bit of a no-brainer. We, we're in the renewable energy business. It doesn't sit well with me to turn up with a diesel van smoking away on the driveway when we turn up jobs. It doesn't give the right image at all. And quite frankly, I love driving electric vehicles. It's a whole different experience. When it comes to range, you need to be thinking more along the lines of your everyday, not your one-offs. So people often say, I want a car that'll do 400 miles. Okay, why? Well, because once a year I drive to Scotland. Yeah, yeah, okay. That one day might be mildly inconvenient, or you might just hire a car that can go that far. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but your every day is going to become incredibly cheap. And I could tell you what my total household fuel cost is, but it would probably upset you and your listeners. Um, and when I say household fuel cost, I mean the cost to run my hot, my all electric home and two electric vehicles. Um, and it would probably upset you. So we we'll, might leave that. I don't know. I kind of now want to be upset a bit. Uh, well, you asked for it, Paulie. So my entire electricity bill last month was £76. That's. Well, uh, hold on, hold on. What does that run again? Seventy-six pounds. That runs my whole house. We are fully okay. electric heat pump. Granted, we didn't run the heat pump very long last month, but it does all my hot water, all the cooking, lighting, blah blah blah, all that normal stuff that you have in a house. And it runs two electric vehicles, one of my van, one of which is my wife's car. So, when you add all of those costs together, 
if you were putting fuel into my van and fuel into my wife's car and paying for gas or electric for the house, I guarantee it would have been £76. I, I can guess what it would be, and I've got a smaller family than you. Mm. So we we know from our client base that most people now are edging up to the sort of three to four hundred pounds a month uh, in in energy costs just for the home. Never mind yeah. the vehicle, all of the ball of wax. Um, but yeah, certainly there's not many people getting into this into this range, and it's about integration of of the energy generation, how you utilize it, and we don't live uh, frugally, if you wish, not energy frugally. Um, you know. So, we do stuff like uh, run the dump, the tumble dryer during the summer. <gasps> Shock and horror. Why would we do that? Well, we got nine and a bit kilowatts of PV on the roof and a big battery, and we're allowed to do it because, well, we generate all our own electric in the summer months, so whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and that gives us enough excess as well to, to fuel the vehicles. Certainly we charge the wife's vehicle up at the weekend. Mine plugs in at a low-rate energy uh with octopus energy overnight so that we get four hours of charging at very low rate and we store energy in the batteries at low rate so that we can discharge those when the energy cost is high so yeah, women see, that's that's one of the clever bits isn't it you you take in the energy when it's really low cost it then gets stored in your own house or sorry sometimes on the side of your house yeah. sometimes in the garage wherever and and this is why i like you mate it's wherever you say would be the best and most efficient place for it. Yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go backwards a bit. If I wanted to buy a solar install to go on my house, and let's just say my house is exactly the same as yours to make it easy, so that I'm not spending shed loads on electric, how yeah. much is it costing me roughly? I know you can't give a quote on that. Fine, I can give you a very good guideline price. So our standard 10 panel system, which gives you four kilowatts of PV and a nine and a half kilowatt hour battery. Um, that will set you back between 10 and a half and 11,000 pounds. Okay. Now that's including installation, scaffold, blah, 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 all the access. The only reason there's a variance in there is if we have to do something like change a fuse board out or something like that. Now a four kilowatt PV array with that size of battery will take care of most of the electrical needs of a family home that's running on a gas boiler, okay? And we'll advise you on gas boiler working a bit better as well whilst we're there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if you are in a slightly larger house, so 10 panels will fit on, on most average homes really, really easily. It's, it's not a huge system. You need a house that's roughly five and a half to six metres wide with a pitch angle, with a, with a roof that's around about four metres long it'll fit on most houses have got that kind of space uh you're in a center of town in a compact uh, terrace or something like that you might be a bit narrower we might have to go a bit smaller but then your energy usage is probably a little bit lower as well so it's all scalable um so if you were coming to me as that kind of client three to four bedrooms gas boiler that's where you want to be looking at we then have to look at what that energy for so if you're now thinking, okay, well, next year we might go down for a heat pump. Okay, so we might want to look at maybe putting in an extra battery at the time. Not going to be a lot of use to you initially, but once the heat pump goes in, it'll be worth its weight. And the reason we would do that at the same time as uh, installing the PV is because now you get the 20% discount because you're not paying the VAT. Uh, if you add a battery later, they charge you VAT for it. So don't ask me why government wonderfulness um but we're on zero percent battery sms yes, which is uh, energy saving materials so installed at the same time as the pv and this is why when we talk to people we're asking them are you going down the heat pump route it's not because i want them to buy a heat pump off me now i don't mind buy it later it's irrelevant but if you're planning on it we need to design now so that you're getting the best for your future and the same yeah. applies to an electric vehicle if you're also looking at going down the electric vehicle route, you might want to put a little bit more generation on the roof. And the reason we'd look to put a little bit more power output on the roof, so more panels, is so that we've got a bit more power available so that for a larger portion of the year, you can trickle charge some of that into your car. Because anything that goes to the grid, you're giving it away. Even on the very best export guarantee payment at the moment, which is from Octopus, you're only getting 15 pence. And you can't go on a mixed rate tariff with them. You have to be on their fixed rate. 
So it's a bit of a gotcha. And you're giving it away at 15 pence and then buying it in at 35, 34, 35 pence, whatever it is now. So you don't want to give away any of that because you're wasting 20 pence per you want, Yeah, you want to store every you possibly can, whether that be in your battery, in your hot water tank, or in your car. You want to use as much of that energy as you possibly can. I'm not particularly promoting frivolous use of energy, but you certainly want to be able to store enough of it that you're making use of it. And we have the ability, the kit, without a homeowner having to get involved in thinking about it, the kit exists to be able to just turn stuff on and it will work. And you, you, the beauty of PV, and this is why I, I, I love it so much, which is why I really enjoy what I do, the second we turn that system on, so from day one, we take most installs take a day. By the end of that day, you will be generating power and not buying in. There's no delay. There's no pause. There's no, you've got to fill out these forms and sort this out first. It's yeah. worth from day one. So it's such a low hanging fruit for most people. And this is one of the other problems. It's great if you have the money to pay for it. Like most of these initiatives, they're aimed at people who've got the money to pay for it. And we, get into a whole conversation about how funding and grant schemes are unfair. We're not going to fix the world here. Um, but we know that there are people who are going to suffer. And quite frankly, if you were struggling to put £10 on your key meter, you ain't paying us six, £7,000 for a PV system. It doesn't no. matter. We need other results for that. And that's another See, this point. is it again, it, and and I know me and you can both get on our high horse about this. Mm. You know, putting that ten pound on your key meter, which and we both know the key meter is the worst and most expensive way to have electric, and it's blatantly aimed at people that can't afford to have bills or don't have the right credit rating or don't have X Y Z reasons that they are not good with money right now, and actually, surely we're keeping them down if we're yep. not finding ways to help them move forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. And these packages that are happening now, it's, I find it quite sickening. So I'm, I'm going to get a 400 quid contribution towards my electricity bill for the next six months. Yeah, I don't want it. I don't, I don't, I don't need it. That's Actually, that 400 quid is probably more than it's going to cost me to run my house. So they're paying me to live in my house. That's ridiculous. And I know a lot of that situation they just don't want it i didn't want the 150 quid they gave me on the council tax bill you know it's everybody got whether you want it or not you know um that money is being pushed out and then effectively sent straight to the energy providers who are all fortune now we can profit's not a dirty word i'm fine with businesses making money that is the point i'm in business i'm here to make money that's the long and short of it but at the moment, these companies are making so much money that even they are saying, we've got too much money. What shall we do? We can't spend it. And we have a policy which is essentially rewarding them further with money that we're borrowing as taxpayers to yeah. give back to, to them for a price cap that's going to disappear in six months. I, w I would rather have seen them say, and, and I did, I just, I, I'm going to bang this drum a little bit. I, I had this conversation earlier on. I had a little think about uh, some very quick back of the napkin calculations. And I worked out that you could put around about 1.6 kilowatts of PV and a small battery, two, two kilowatt hours, this battery, put a system together. And the money that they're putting into the boiler upgrade scheme, if you took that money, instead of putting into that, quite frankly not that helpful scheme and put it into building those pv systems you could take care of seventy five thousand homes that's seventy five thousand. that's that's without applying economies of scale and purchasing power at those numbers so in reality you're probably looking at roughly a hundred thousand homes yeah because if if i turn around to simon smith and said i've got enough cash to pay for 75,000 of these. Go see what deal you can get me. Oh, God, a fantastic deal on buying the panels, buying the batteries, buying the PV arrays. You'd have a custom kit built that yeah. you would just put across 
all the different homes. And you're talking about a very compact system that will fit on practically every roof. It's only, in most cases, four panels. You know, so four of our standard panels will fit on most roofs. There's, there's going to be very few that you can't help. And there's a there's another side to this. I can't even remember what the billions is that we're spending on giving everyone 400 quid. But it's in orders of magnitude more than the boiler upgrade scheme money. So we could have taken that money and borrow it fine. I'm happy to pay a bit more tax for that to help these help people out. I'm cool with that. It's fine. But take that money and you would probably then be looking at helping maybe half a million homes, maybe even as many as a million homes of people who are struggling to pay their bills with this incredibly easy to roll out system. But do you know what, mate? There's the, the thing that bothers me there is me and you have talked before about some of these solar panel companies who are doing it on grants and you can have this and you can, I'll fit it all for free on your house. Mm. And then you find out that the company's taken ownership of part of the house in, in the contract. Yeah. And, and I'm bothered. I'm really bothered about how many people are going to come to try to sell their house and find out they don't own part of it. Oh, that's happening already. Yeah. And already. So, it's what they call a rent a roof scheme, and it was a byproduct of the feed-in tariff market, really. Um, so if you couldn't afford to buy PV, then having a company come in and put that PV system on for you at either a very minimal fee or no cost at all seems like a great plan. And yeah. in reality, it kind of is. Until you want to sell it or make any changes. And then you look at the clauses in the contracts, which tend to mean that you end up having to pay for the PV system at the cost of the system back in 2011, significantly more money than it would cost now. It also makes it more complex when it comes to selling, which whilst it may not stop you being able to sell, it might well put off a group of prospective buyers and it yeah. would certainly have legal fees. So there's a lot of complications involved. The other problem is a lot of these companies – were not set up to be long-term businesses. No. They came, made their money, they extracted as much as they needed to, and then they dumped it and ran. And they're bought out by other companies who are not interested. They don't maintain them. They don't do anything with them, but you can't touch them. And actually getting in touch with these people, these companies, and actually getting the information required so that you can progress a home sale is nightmarish in some cases, you know, because there's just nobody to talk to. Nobody knows about it. There's no records. There's no information. You know, I mean, I've my, my standard advice for most people, if you can't get hold of them, switch the thing off, you know, or better still, remove the GSM card out of the, mo out of the uh, meter. It's just unplug it because they'll soon get in touch if their revenue stream stops and then, then you'll know who they are. So... <laughs> You know? Very true. When somebody's suddenly phoning you up going, why isn't this happening? Yeah, yeah. It's Oh, um, look, we've found you. Goody. Yeah, goody. That's all we needed to do. And, you know, and it's a sorry state of affairs. You know, there's the feeding tariff scheme was great for kickstarting starting the industry and it did its job, but it was also allowed to, to, to fund a lot of very poor behaviour. Um, yeah. and, and I don't mean uh, illegal, dodgy behaviour, but certainly poor fiscal behaviour. Um, so it encouraged an awful lot of uh, foreign investment, which isn't xenophobia or racism on my part. It means that the money goes out of our economy. And whenever you move money out of economies and stop that circular motion of movement, of money moving, you know, like Paulie goes and does a gig and gets paid and goes from the gig and pays for his fuel and buys some biscuits and takes the kids to Disneyland or whatever, that money's moving around and it's, it's circulating the economy. That's what we do. As yeah. soon as you rip feeding that money out of the economy, well, there's, it's not being replaced by anything. There's no product there. We're not creating. So there's no way back for it, really. It's just going elsewhere it's like crazy trickle down economics policies that never but <laughs> don't don't get no <laughs> so, no rapidly moving on yeah because right. paulie has a soapbox just over here <laughs> that he's really <laughs> tempted to get on right i don't get it i don't get it i don't get it look yeah. this person over here can't afford to eat let's give the rich person extra money what the yeah especially 
most of those rich people actually turn around and go, what the hell are you doing? We don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know? now, the nice thing is, mate, I, I don't know about you, but I'm seeing a, a massive change in the tide of we've got some good people that actually have money now. And there are some good people doing some good things, and I'm trying to help a load of them. But, but, but don't forget that, because yeah. me and you would just would. have a stop about that for five hours. Um, so back to the costs and what you get. And, and my head is kind of spinning with the numbers that you just said about. If I'm putting a system on that's costing me 11 grand, right? Yeah. What's my return on investment? Because I'm having trouble working it out. Because you're saying now my costs for everything are about seventy five pound. Mm. My return on investment of that eleven grand is really good. Yeah, and, and and slightly perversely, the the energy prices are rapidly improving the value of your PV system. Aren't they just? You have to consider that every kilowatt hour that you generate, every unit of electricity that you generate, so we measure electricity in kilowatt hours, okay? So it's energy used over time. And that's what you pay for. That's what your import meter bills you for. You know, you pay for every unit. So if you're generating your own and you have a, a number of units you generate a year, so let's say your four kilowatt PV system generates uh, on an average three and a half thousand kilowatt hours per annum you're going to be able to utilize, in most cases, about 70% of that in reality. That's what you're going okay. to use. So you then have to look at that and say, okay, how many years am I going to keep this for? Well, probably 10 to 15 years in most cases. You, you're going to spend that kind of money. You're not moving out in six months, generally. Yeah. So you take that cost, you divide it down by the number of kilowatt hours generated over that time span, whatever time span you choose, and that's what your kilowatt hour pence price is. And you are fixing your energy price for the lifespan that you choose. Whether it be so if you choose, I'm gonna want I want this energy price to relate to a two years. Yeah, that's gonna be a really high per kilowatt hour price. There's no getting away from it. But if you say a more realistic, I want to know that I'm gonna be living in this house for 10 years before I spend 11 grand on it yeah in the same way as you wouldn't put well you might put a new kitchen in when you're moving but you know what i mean you wouldn't spend fortunes on a home just before you're planning on moving you just don't and uh so let's say you're going to buy this system it's going to last you for 10 years that's that's how you would work out what is that energy price yeah. and that valuable to you than understanding your roi if you think about it, what you're saying is instead of buying electricity, and we're going to use the current price cap at 34 pence a unit. So if we're fixed at 34 pence a unit, but I can create my own energy for seven to ten pence per unit. Do I do I need to get a spreadsheet out for this or do I just get on with it? I'll be honest, mate, I'm quite tired lately. We might need to do the spreadsheet when it's just me and you. <laughs> That's okay. Um that's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the, the more interesting one is when you then start looking at businesses. Now, businesses at the moment, and this is really what, what we're aiming at here, is talking to, to those business owners out there who are now looking at their energy bills and going, Jesus, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this incredible four to five times increase in my overhead cost. It's crazy, you know? Um, and in some cases, we genuinely can't do anything for them. They don't have the roof space. Um, and it's incredibly frustrating. If we can get them on mixed tariffs, we can we can do battery storage systems that allow you to time shift. You don't need PV to have a battery system. It's not necessary. Yeah. Okay. Um, but if you own uh, you know, a reasonable sized building, you're sitting there and you're looking at your energy bill. Let's say you're manufacturing widgets for trainers. Why not? Anything cranky or wrong, my, my electricity bill's gone from £3,000 a quarter to £12,000 a quarter. And that's not uncommon, by the way. Yeah. Probably being generous. Uh, so you could look at this and go, okay, well, what, what do I do to combat this? Well, the quickest, simplest answer is just put a PV system on the roof. If you can, just do it. You don't need your financial director to sit down and work this out. You don't even call your account. There's a number of reasons why that's true. 
The first one being that your costs are going up, so you need to control costs. And there's only a few ways that you can do that as a business. One of them is to lose people. Most small businesses can't afford to do that because then they don't have the people there to run the job. And let's face it, you don't want to worry. Most businesses don't want to get rid of good staff. There's no point. No. You can reduce your runtime, your hours. Most businesses can't do that. No. Or you can move to a more efficient building. Well, that's really difficult because, well, moving is incredibly expensive. It's dangerous for a business to do. And frankly, property prices are ridiculous. So you might well be stuck with what you've got. So you simply just go, okay, well, we're going to put PV on, right? What's the next calculation involved in this? How do I sort out what size of system I need? In most cases, I'll be honest, you're just looking at how much roof space, how much roof space have you got? Just fill it up. Because once you're building, once you're generating your own power, what you're doing is you're not just controlling your bills, you're changing your choices. You're giving yourself options. Okay, so now I'm generating electric. What else can I do with that? What can I do with electric? Yeah, I can run my life on my process machinery. Well, I can do my hot water as well. So all my hot water is now taken care of, really, by, by the PV system because it can heat that hot water tank for me, no problem. Uh, it can run my heating system most of the time that I need. It certainly can run my air conditioning, can run my plant, and we can store some power in the battery so that it can run the building overnight. So my costs are coming down even further. We then get into the nitty-gritty of, of financing it. So you're not going to pay the VAT because if you're a big enough business, you're back registered, getting the back back. Brilliant. It's 20%. Yeah. So you, you're kind of on a level playing field with domestic who don't pay that anyway. You're then going to look at your capital allowances. And because it's solar PV, you get 130% capital allowance on it. <clears throat> That's effectively... After capitalization, that's about a 19% discount on a system. So let's say you're going to buy a system for 100 grand. After your tax super deduction, you're effectively paying about 81,000 pounds for it. That's a bargain. And if you work on most businesses, there's a five year payback plan on any investment. So five year depreciation is fairly standard in business. So you take that, you take that kilowatt hour price exactly the same calculations for domestic and work out what that kilowatt hour is worth to you. What is that single unit of power generated by that PV system worth to you over five years? So, you know, work that out and compare that to what you're paying out now. And I guarantee you it's a fraction of what you're going to be paying on your export, on your import energy come end of this price cap. And even with any assistance the government gives us, the six months we've just been bought with our little 400 quid and we'll have a price cap in place. Yeah, that's fantastic. What happens in six months' time, mate? Yeah. You can't just keep borrowing money to pay the energy companies. That makes no sense. This is plaster for a weeping wound. It's infected. It needs fixing. Well, this so is it. When, when I, I – um, full disclosure and all that, I went to see Simon a couple of weeks ago, had a cup of tea at his new office. Um, and when I said to you that – if things go the way I'm hoping, me and the wife are going to build our own house in the way that we want it. And I want Simon involved because, mate, I've got a funny feeling that you'll look at it and just go, Paul, for efficiency, let's look at this, this and this. And I can incorporate that into the costs of what I would have done anyway. Yep. And you're going to save me a fortune over the next 15, 20 years. Absolutely. And, and most new builds now... Um... It's very, very easy to exceed um, building regs requirements. There's some minimum regs that we all have to achieve when we're building brand new. That's quite normal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Exceeding those is very, very easy. And there are a number of products out there that I could point you out that would make life so much easier and, quite frankly, make your home virtually free to live in. Uh, you can certainly buy leveraging tariffs, export rates. Um, you can certainly earn enough during the peak months to offset your cost. So you can be net zero cost. You will probably be able to be carbon negative. If yeah. that's important to you, it's not important to everyone um, because you'll be generating so much power and exporting enough that your footprint of the build is zeroed out, if not completely eradicated. My and, and I do think that's important. We've both got kids. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, my 1967 semi 
um, that we've refurbished is, technically speaking, carbon neutral. Jeez, well done, mate. We export far more than we ever import in the year. Use We self-consume as much of that energy as possible. And that's without taking into account the vehicles. And I know everybody's going to go, yeah, but they had to be built somewhere and get lithium in them. Well, okay, yeah, fine. But we need something now. And this is what we have available now, and this is what we can use. And it's a hundred million times better, in my opinion, than burning stuff. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. there are so many really easy to access technologies, really easy ways to deliver this. It just needs you to be brave and go for it and understand that, yes, you need to do your due diligence. You absolutely must do your due diligence when you're picking your suppliers uh, installer. And I can't do everybody's home or everybody's premises. It's absolutely not possible. But there are a number of us out there who are very reputable, who are very good and very passionate at what they do. Stay away from the nationals in the, on the whole. They're just there to make money and leave. Look at your local guy. Look at what they've been doing. They will help you out and they understand. Find people with passion. If they enjoy what they're doing and it's not about the money, they'll still be there to support you in years to come. You know, I have clients, I've, I've literally just finished a heat pump actually for a guy who was a client in 2011. Uh, you know, and uh, his first quote came to him from Octopus. Um, and we quoted, we were not cheaper than Octopus, but he came to us because he knows it's right and he yeah. knows what will work. And he's quite right. We've got a heat pump in there that's running a copper 5.2 at the moment, uh, which is incredible. That means, by the way, uh, for every kilowatt of energy going in, it's producing 5.2 kilowatts of heat energy out. So I think we like, you know, Amplify, you know, when you put your little mic on and you go on stage and you do your sellotape my face thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just nutshell your show. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, you plug that in, it goes into a, into an amplifier. Yeah, that's kind of what it's doing in layman's terms. You know, yeah, be sure. screaming at now, but chill out, guys. It's just for people to understand. Um, you know, it, it, that's what it's doing. It's it's amplifying the value of that energy. Um, you see systems. You have to know what you're doing when you put them in, but there are ways of doing it and making it work very very well. And uh, you know, all of this technology is there and. These are, these are tough times for people trying to make decisions about how they're going to move forward. And I think, I think there's a lot of panic setting in, you know, when yeah. you, when you see these costs coming in and of course the news doesn't help. Everybody's going, it's a crisis. It's not a crisis. We've known it's coming for a long time. It's become a problem because a lot of things have gone wrong at the same time. Yeah. That's the situation. We always knew that the energy price cap was going. It was only ever there for 10 years. It tied in very nicely with feeding tariff. I think we talked about this when we came over. Um, you know, the feeding tariff system was brought in place to promote solar PV during the time that the price cap existed. The idea being, I think, and I don't know this because I wasn't part of the ministerial body that came up with this magical plan, uh, would be that there'd be an uptake of solar PV. The feeding tariff money would pay for that, would generate that interest. And then by the time we come to the end of it, we're not quite so reliant on all these fossil fuel systems and boom, off we go. We can let the price cap go to where it needs because hell, we're using loads of renewables. Well, the world didn't quite work out that way, as we know. Uh, so we've come out of... Uh, COVID, obviously difficult times. Demand's gone through the roof. Gas is low. Uh, problems with the Ukraine, obviously, with Russia, Ukraine's, you know, well, Russia basically being a bunch of crazy people. Uh, actually, that's not fair. One person being a crazy person. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. One of them bothers me. Yeah, definitely got some issues. And all, I think, and uh, it might chill him out. You never know. That would be uh, amazing. It would be just one hug, and that's all he needed. This is where it's been. this. This whole thing is your fault. He needs a poorly hug. Have you ever hugged a Putin? I don't think they'd let me near. <laughs> but if you had, it may. If I had, if I was allowed, then <laughs> I could save the world. No, stop it. Right. <laughs> back to solar stuff. Okay. Yeah. Dangers. Because I have had friends of mine say, oh, I'm never going to get solar because it sets fires in your roof. Okay. Where's the 
How many fires have you seen that were set off by PV systems? See, this is it. I've only seen two in the news. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Isn't it funny how people will jump in a petrol car with explosions going on within feet of their body, right? Really? But no, that's fine because we've been using them for years. You find hurtling down the road at 70 miles an hour. What could possibly go wrong? But yeah. Only 70. You haven't been in my car for a... No, no, this yeah. is recorded. No. Definitely 70 is the top speed. 60, maybe even 50, to be honest. And uh, <laughs> I walk everywhere. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, the there are risks. Absolutely, there are risks. We're dealing with uh, high-voltage DC. Um, if there are what we call arc faults, so if there's a problem with the cabling or the links or something like that, then yes, things can go wrong and there can be fires. There are some products that help us mitigate that. Um, so there are uh, special kinds of optimizers, these are little control boxes that go on the back of every panel, um, and they basically shut down if there's a fault in either the cabling or the panel, and it's pretty immediate. So there's never going to be a problem or just shut down. There are other products if you can't afford that type of system. Uh, there's a new one that's come out uh, that is a, a special clip, uh, vibrated clip that goes over uh, the connections that are made on site. Because the biggest point of failure is, generally speaking, the connections that are made by the engineers on site. Um, gotcha. it's, it's easy to not get it right, uh, and it's very rarely checked. Um, so you have a little cover thing that goes over it. It's full of intermessive material. If there's a fault in there and it sets on fire, then it will only burn out in there. There's no oxygen. Kills it. Job done. Totally Genius. get up there and fix the problem. So that's quite nice. I'm, I'm promoting the use of those on all of our non-optimized uh, systems at the moment. Um, just because, quite frankly, they cost, I think it's, it's about 38 quid for a pair. You might need four on one job. So that, to me, is worth a roof. Uh, so we just stick them on. So, I don't know. It's worth a roof and all of my family's ancient photos, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, kids are replaceable. Don't lose the photos. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before we get complaints, he's joking. He's. I hope he's joking. <laughs> <laughs> I might be. No. Um... But, it's, but it is true, isn't it? And... Yeah, and I know as human beings we always jump at what's the worst case scenario and all of this. But if if I hadn't asked you about what are the dangers, somebody mm. somewhere would have sent me a message going, "Well, I saw a fire started because of this," and it's like, "Good lord, it's electrical!" <laughs> yeah. There are there are electrical fires all the time, absolutely all the time. You you don't hear about many of them, but they happen. Um, yeah, yeah, you do not hear about all oh, electrical fire started from this dodgy charger plugged into this dodgy socket. You don't hear about it very much because they just happened. Yeah, and uh, you know, and and solar PV is a fairly new kid on the block. I mean, okay, I've been doing it for twelve years, but it's become more and more common for people to talk about it. So it's an easy target. In the yeah. same, way, you know, as well as I do, if there's an electric vehicle that's been involved in a crash and it sets on fire, then the, the news stories are full of how dangerous electric vehicles are. Well, good God, man, do you not know about the history of cars and how many burnt before, you know, certain manufacturers did anything about it? Because they decided that let's weigh up the cost of fixing it against the cost of just paying people for being dead, you know? <laughs> Mate, I've, I think I've seen exactly the documentary you're on about, and yeah. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'll probably get sued. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm names very carefully and uh, i can't do anything with them and then <laughs> but right okay I've, i have taken too much of your time already but this is a subject that i think we could keep running with and yeah. and do you know what i think your idea is great of see it as a cost for 10 to 15 years and do it again because you're going to save a shed load more yeah than you're going to spend now we, we can absolutely guarantee that uh, there are certain things that are inevitable. Um, it used to be death and taxes, and now, quite frankly, it's energy price increases. Um, we know, we know with absolute certainty that in six months' time, that price cap is going, and there will be another leap in costs. This, this is not going away. Yeah. We uh, just, just look at it on a global scale really as to what's happening so we know that the the Nord Stream pipeline had been shut down um we know that Germany backed out of uh, Nord Stream 2 or 4 or whatever the hell it is um so those gas pipelines out of Russia were already shut down yeah we know that there is instability there so let's say 
magically overnight, there's a big climb down. Everybody goes, geez, this was a really bad idea. Really sorry for invading your country. We'll be off. We'll help you fix all of that. Really. Is that because I gave the right people cuddles? The cuddles, the hug. Poorly hugs. The world suddenly goes clever again, right? Everybody's brain switches on. We've now got pipelines that are absolutely decimated. They're destroyed. They're under the water at quite a depth, and they're damaged. They've been damaged deliberately. They've been sabotaged. We know that. I'm not going to skirt around it. They've been broken deliberately. That's going to take some repairing. It's not a little split in the pipe that they can get down there and sort out. It's yeah. billions of investment. Yeah, That's not being fixed overnight. That could be a real infrastructure problem of five to 10 years. That's realistic. They've got to find the, rebuild it. They've got to replace it. It's incredibly dangerous work at great depth, but it's not going to happen overnight. We also know that uh, a lot of the nuclear generation that we've relied on, certainly in France is having a lot of problems. They're having to shut down a lot of it to the point where we're now looking at turning back on coal fired by, um, generation. Crazy, but it's happening. So we know that there's going to be a shortage of gas. We know that this isn't going away overnight, and we know there's no other way of getting it moved around the world so that we can utilize it, which means that our electricity prices are going to go up. Our gas prices are 100% going to go up. This problem is not going away. It's not a crisis. It's a huge problem. And it's a problem that we have some solutions for that are very, very easy to roll out if you're in the position to be able to do so. And I think if you're in the position to be able to do so, quite frankly, you really need to. Because uh, complaining about it isn't fixing anything. Um, be brave, be bold, get on with it. Do you know what? We're, we're actually at the point where it's worth begging, borrowing, stealing the install cost to save you in the future. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if somebody could make some sensible decisions regarding the economy and our pound could have a bit of a reset and, uh, you know, inflation maybe get under control. But let's, you know, it's pie in the sky. We're going to fix that in a hurry either. Um, I did a talk recently very close to Parliament. I did try and go and give them all a cuddle, but I wasn't allowed to. No. I'm not sure you'd want to. I'm fairly sure that Jacob rees mogg would probably just suck your soul out as you stood there. But um, <laughs> Victorian... Jesse, Jesse, we, we we might have just gone political. <laughs> Are we not supposed to do that? Sorry, Sorry Je- no, we, 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 you, you carry on, Jesse. We're in trouble, mate. <laughs> right, I'm going to ask, just because we're both going to get on our high horses about this, I'm going to ask you the last question that I ask everybody, okay? Um, this whole show started out just being me giving out nuggets of information to try and help people. And now every week I ask the guest that comes on, What's your one nugget that you want every listener to walk away with? First thing you can do, every homeowner or business owner who has a gas boiler, and this is really counterproductive because this doesn't sound like PV, go to your boiler, turn it down a bit, turn the flow temperature down for your heating system and put a jumper on. If you're sat in your lounge on Christmas Day in your shorts and T-shirt and thinking, crikey, it's balmy and warm in here and it's snowing outside, you're living wrong. That's expensive. You can turn your boilers down. Every degree you can take out of your flow temperature will make it cheaper to run. And you're probably not going to notice a five-degree drop in flow temperature. All right? That one thing could save you quite a lot of money this coming winter. And we know, we're, we're due a mild winter, but we know it's going to be expensive. So please, just turn that boiler down a little bit and realise we have jumpers for a reason. Dude, I love that. I love that to bits. And just so you know, um, it, I know you've listened to some of the shows. Jesse sends me notes through the chat option on this platform we're on. Um, that just go between me and him, and I think you've just made him go on a political rant. <laughs> um, Jesse, brilliant. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure I'm going to get control of the Jesse back again today. I think he's he's going to go off on one. Excellent, excellent. So we we look forward to some of Jesse's dips, and I have patented that by the way. That is mine. <laughs> Jesse's dips. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, we've got um, the bits that we share in Patreon. He's called them the uh, the Nugget Share Box. I like it. I like it. I know, it. right? I know. 
genius. He should be doing marketing or something. Right. Shut up. Stop being interesting, will you? Come right. on, I've got time to keep. Ladies and gents, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. Seriously, I know he's one of my buddies, but if you want to get in touch, we will make sure there's ways for you to find it down in the description and you can get in touch with Simon. If you're nervous about getting in touch with him, get in touch with me or Jesse and we'll throw any questions you have over to Simon and get them back to you. Is that all right, Simon? Absolutely, 100%. I will help anyone I can. Awesome. Thank you very much, mate. Right, Simon, say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Ladies and gents, we're going to go to a quick break and then it'll be me and Jesse talking about Simon behind his back and he doesn't get to hear that bit until the show goes out. Now, don't turn your back on me. That, that's not how it works. That's too literal. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs> nice. Wait, I enjoyed that. <laughs> how much did we... Dude, I reckon we did about 50 minutes. Yeah. I lost track. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I mean, I, I wanted to just let you go on some of it because you're saying things that people need to hear. Mm. There's there's so much going on at the moment that's just wrong. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know how we fix it. And it worries me greatly. I love what I do and I love helping those people that I can, but I worry for the people that I can't. And there's a lot of them. And that's the difficult pill to swallow because I have the option. I have I have the, the ability, as as do everybody, as does everybody else in my game. I'm not unique. We, you know, the, there's a lot of people who can do this. Yeah. Um, we all know how to help those people who are struggling, and nobody wants to do it. And we've got more and more people falling into that bracket. It used to be that the view was everybody's idle, shiftless, sitting at home, collecting the dole, and just enjoying life. That's not reality. No. That isn't how it is. You Mate, know? I've got... Um, see, what you've said there kind of goes with the theory of mental theft. I mean, yes, I can go out and do talks and I can charge a good fee for doing the talk. But the ones that actually give me the buzz is when I'm when I'm at a women's institute and I'm teaching yeah. little old ladies how to stop scammers nicking their pension. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when, when somebody watches one of my live Scam of the Week things and they go, shit, someone just tried that on me. And I stopped it because of what you'd done. Yeah. That, for me, is when you go, that's what it's about. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, uh, that old money thing means that we can keep going. That's it. Unfortunately, we need to do it. It is part of life. It's the reality of life. Um, but it's yeah. how you affect those people that make <clears throat> choices that make the decisions about how the money, that the revenue that they collect as a business from us as, as, as taxpayers, because that's what it is, it's our money, um, that they're courageously giving back to us and then we're giving it to the energy companies. But, you know, it's um, it's how do you change that? And it it's painful to watch. It's, yeah. it's just so wrong when you know that there are ways to solve this quite easily really yes it takes some effort yes it will take a will to do so and it will be a very brave politician who stands up and does it but it is doable see this is a, i don't think it's any of the politicians we currently have i i can't say i disagree i i don't i, I think we've got two years of absolute shambolic mess ahead of us i um, i almost think that we're getting really close to being ripe for a new party to come in that yeah. turns around and goes, I'm actually here for the people. The problem is I think it will go too far the other way. Um, I think you, we're, we're actually closer than you might want to think to being closer towards more of a fascist type of state than anything else, yeah. just because the mood is there. And yeah. People have short memories, very short memories, and there's very little balance in the world. You know, um, if you if you took a centrist view, you're always going to struggle, and you'll almost never come out on top because you know you don't have a majority either way. So yeah. it's it's difficult to come out on top. What you need is extreme views to be either winning on the left or winning on the right. And it takes that swing 
to make a win. You know, it, it's just the way of it. Um, and what you have to rely on is that there is enough difference between the left and the right without it being extremist yeah. that one or the other of them is going to do the right thing. So it's probably very little known, but Labour were the party that actually pushed forward most of the green agenda that exists now. Um, and it worked very, very well. It wasn't the best thought out scheme in my mind, but it was better than the absolute nothing that we would have got for the other options. You know, it's, uh, it's a sorry state. And I kind of, I I wonder what, what, what the world would be like if people like myself or possibly better educated than myself for sure, were able to have influence in these, in these arenas, you know, um, and to talk at, at our level, but also at theirs, which is something. I think you know what, mate? Why, why don't we? Why don't we put up this for a few years and go and buy an island? <laughs> and, and, and you know, we'll call it the cult of nuggets or something. I don't know. Well, with the way with the way inflation's going and the the weakness of the pounds, and we might be able to buy Ireland, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, um, Simon and Jesse, do you guys want to do an extra bit? I'm uh, fine. Me too. Awesome. Right, Should we I'm hit gonna... stop on the record and do a knee bit. Yes, that'll make you it really easy for your editing, won't it? Newton's nuggets. So there you go. That was Simon. Isn't he lovely? Um, okay, so uh, my brain's just gone and. Left me. So Simon was great talking about um, solar energy. Thinking, if you need somebody um, to talk to, just, then you uh, should probably go over to his website. The link is in the description of wherever you're watching or listening to this. Yeah, I like that. Right. And something me and Simon talked about a few times was one day I would love to build my own house. I'd love to. I'd love to find, you know, a bit of land with a house that's downtrodden and broken and not doing so well and turn into something amazing for my family okay um and and even then he said paul if you can manage to do to bring solar into the plans for it it'd be amazing yeah you, know, you could get it all done within the cost of the build and it will save you an absolute fortune and i think it would because i've been thinking about the numbers he said about okay yeah he was saying that he pays about 73 pound a month for electric for his three-bed house Right, it does the water, the heating, the electric for stuff around the stuff and stuff and stuff, right? And the cars and the two vehicles. I mean, just my car, the petrol's like three or four hundred quid a month. And the thing is, with that, is that I'm sure there's plenty of people who are listening to this who, uh, not everybody, but there'll be a few people who listen to this who think, Oh, I've got a bit of land and I've got a barn or whatever. I mean, seriously, yeah. why wouldn't you just stick solar panels everywhere? <laughs> I think it would. It could make you a fortune. I know it's <laughs> it's an investment, but you know yeah. the the numbers we were so. Um, whilst Simon was, whilst when we came off air, I was talking to Paul about the numbers he was talking about, um, and the cost to install. One of the things that were, was always an issue when I had been talking to people, because I worked in the battery industry a long time ago, so it's a subject we had a lot of chats about. Yeah. And when, you know, the 10, 11 years ago, when it was really becoming a thing that the government was trying to get you involved with, they were talking about a 20 year return. And I was yes. just like, that's just too long. Yeah. Partly yeah. because things like batteries need to be replaced in that time and what have you and servicing and all the rest of it. And even, even on that, Simon was quite blatant. He said, you know, if you build a decent system now, you need to be looking at replacing it in 15 years. Yeah. Ish. So if you were looking at a 20-year return, that that's not great. Because um, you're going to have probably not going to get the return in the time it takes you to have to replace the thing. But yeah. now what we're talking about is actually based on, if you go all out like and you're good with your electricity and everything like Simon is, well, that return is more like 18 months to two years. And suddenly, that's an amazing return. And that's not including the fuel, not necessarily including the fuel necessarily. Well, I think I did. I included some fuel in my calculation. Yes. But if, yes, you're, if you've got electric cars and all of that, you could 
the amount of money you could be saving. I only put a bit of fuel in there, like what I would say is a small amount of general living fuel, essentially. But the reality is that your your the likelihood is if you're going greener and you're getting the electric cars and all the rest of it and you're saving money on fuel and you're saving money in the house your return even if it's not as good as that even in five years after that you're actually making your money back and so that's a reasonable amount of time to be thinking about i think well, this is it isn't it just on the easy numbers right for, for uh, let's say i'll go a cheap month it's 300 quid on fuel okay let's say we've been quite good on the electric and the heating and everything like that we've done 150 quid in a detached house okay yeah that's 450 quid a month ish right so let's say i'm saving 400 pound a month all of a sudden you're looking at that's 4800 pound a year yeah simon was saying that one of the systems was 10 grand yeah. and I, you know we were talking 10 or 11 grand to do this so on my basic maths there it's under two and a half years and yeah. it's and as a business owner you can look at getting electric cars and there are tax benefits if you get it through the business so there are ways of getting electric cars which are actually affordable so you're yeah you know you're talking to that like depending on how you purchase those vehicles you could be saving yourself quite a bit of money no don't, right and i will do a disclaimer here Paul and Jesse are not financial advisors. No, we are Please not. Please do not take any of this as financial advice. You should <laughs> never take a financial advice from a man who likes gambling with cards and trying to read people for a living. <laughs> yeah, just don't. But come on. It's Jesse, are we close to the point here where it's it could actually be worth somebody like me taking a loan out to get this done? Repay the loan back over five years or whatever, and you'll actually be paying less than you would have on your your parents. Yeah, potentially. Again, not financial advice. Not financial advice. Please do not take a loan out. But there are there are up. things to think about here. Um, there are, aren't there? Yeah. I honestly, this. I, I know. I said I wanted to do this show. I didn't know where it'd end up. I didn't know how the conversation would go with Simon, but. Seriously, he answered everything that I threw at him really blatantly, really nicely, exactly what we said before about didn't talk down to me at all, and even happily gave out the numbers. And I just like on that point, I'd like to say two things. Firstly, we had a really good chat. I asked him a question and he gave some amazing advice, um, which is going on the Patreon. So if this is something you're thinking about, and you want to find yourself a supplier, then yeah, then you need to go and join. It was worth you joining the five quid for Patreon just for a month, just to go and blim and listen to that. Yeah, right. Pick the lowest version of the Nuggets Patreon thing. Nick all of the extra bits from everybody and quit. Yeah, I don't it's mind. Worth, it's worth you doing it if you're thinking about solar, just to go and listen to those Q and A. Yeah. But on top of that, the other thing which I laughed with him about was that he's a git. Because every time, because while the recording's going, I'm writing down questions of things I want to ask him. And every time I did that, 30 seconds later, he was giving all that information already. Yeah. He so was, I was really he, lucky to have a question left to ask him. It was, wasn't it? It was so funny. He was answering your questions. And every so often I saw you, because people who, who've listened to us for a while, they know that I can see you in the green room listening. And I saw you a couple of times go, huh, and, and then kind of do another note. And I was thinking, what's on with Jesse there? This is going really well. <laughs> and I'm there going, oh, another three questions I've got to delete. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, mate, I thought that was funny as thank you for that. Um, yeah, Simon, thank you very much, mate. Good luck with the business. I know it's going to go strength to strength. I think you're going to have a lot of people asking you for your... Uh, your knowledge and your help. I think it's going to be a very busy few years for him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and actually, something else had just popped in my head. The cost of electric is just going to keep going up at the moment. Yeah, well, you, when you said the bill of being like 150 quid or whatever, it was, the uh, typical at the moment is about 350. Yeah. So. This is it. My workings are on ridiculously low numbers. Yeah. 
And even on my rubbish workings on ridiculously low numbers, I can pay it back in two and a half years. Yeah. Not financial advice. Anyway, moving on, shall we? Have you got stuff, that, news stuff to talk about? What's going on in our worlds at the moment, Jesse? I mean, from my point of view, um, lots is a simple answer. Um, yeah. But in amongst life stuff, I had a really cool photo shoot with somebody who has been a guest on the show, Nikki. Who got Nikki in- Booten. Nikki got engaged, and uh, I had the pleasure of both photographing and filming the engagement. It was a surprise. It was definitely a surprise to her other half. So congratulations, Nikki. That was awesome. Uh, I know that we... Nikki's doing some stuff with her business that will be very interesting for other people to be in the future. So we might have Nikki on again at some point in the future. We just don't know when. Um, if so, we yeah. get Nikki on again, can we both sit there and gaze adoringly and go, tell us about it? <laughs> you can if you like, Paul. Awesome. Awesome. I got this. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that, that was lovely in all the stuff that's been going on in our world at the moment. Yeah. It was so nice seeing those photos, mate. And 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 a special thanks to Mrs. Pauly, who covered my backside for a load of stuff that I had going on. Who during that photo shoot that I couldn't cancel for obvious reasons, uh, I had an awful lot of stuff just happen that was outside my control, and Mrs. Pauly came and helped. So thank you. <laughs> She's pretty awesome, isn't she? She's We're very right. awesome. Um, and Mini Pauly helped as well, apparently. Yeah. 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 Both and- Mini Paulies. Yeah, and the furry one. Um, that just sounds wrong now I've said it. And I've just had a text saying that I've I've missed a parcel and I have to click this link to pay one pound forty five to them. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Scam of the week. <laughs> now um right. Nuggeteer, are we are we on time yeah. for Nuggeteer of the Week? Let's do Nuggeteer. And Nugget jingle. It's time for the Nuggeteer of the Week. Well done, sir. Like that. I know you only did the final flourish to help me to stop. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, Nuggeteer of the Week this week is a friend that me and Jesse have both made in the wonderful world of Twitch. Uh, this lady has been supporting us. Um, me and Jesse both started streaming on Twitch. When we do that, we are just gaming. We are just messing about. We are just being ourselves. We're not giving any advice. We're not helping with mental theft stuff. We're not trying to help build businesses. We are just gamers messing about and being pretty rubbish at games. Okay. Yeah. But this young lady has supported us from the start, and I don't know why. She is just awesome. And when she runs her own streams, she promotes Newton's Nuggets on it. I. <laughs> Seriously, this is going out to Becca Boo on Twitch. Thank you so much, mate. You're an absolute diamond, and we both love you to bits. Yes, we do. Um, yeah, even even Mrs. Pauly, if she sees Becca pop up in a chat somewhere, she's like, oh, Becca's on. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you now that she went live just before we started recording this, so I'll be going off to watch that after we finish recording. Oh, is that why you're saying hurry up? Because you want yeah. to go and do that instead? Yeah. Fair enough, I am, aren't you? Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe we could drop a link to her Twitch channel. It's there. Awesome. Uh, go and check it on the website. So Nuggeteer of the Week always goes on the website rather than uh, into the descriptions. Yeah, yeah, good move. Anything else, Jesse? I no, can't I think, think of it. Yeah, I think, I think everything else that I'm working on at the moment is secret for one reason or another. Yes. That is Jesse's version of Shush Ball, that's it. <laughs> That'll do, Pig. That'll do. <laughs> hey! Is it, um... Yeah, right. So, ladies and gents, thank you so much for being here. As always, um, every time you share the show, every time you listen to the show, every time you, you promote the show, it just means so much to me and Jesse in our wonderful, weird worlds that we're in at the moment. Yeah. That you guys are still promoting us, still helping us, and still backing us. Thank you so much for being there, and we will see you next week with another thrilling instalment of Newton's Nuggets.
Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. Now, if you want to subscribe, it should be up there. If you want to see more of Newton's Nuggets, they're down there. If you want to see more about mental theft stuff, that should be down there somewhere. And the business speaker stuff should be up there. Thank you very much. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.